You're welcome. Kind of stand up. I don't want to. Where we need plastic. Five boys. Are you want to sit? Room right down by Rich. I'm just going to stand up.
Back when I was a young boy, I heard many stories of sacrifice, duty, and honor. Stories of heroes from World War II and Korea. Then when I was a young teen, something happened in a small country called Vietnam. Thousands of our young men and women fought bravely and with honor in a place so unlike America, it was shocking. But they sucked it up, they stood tall and proud and did what all of us have done who have served. We followed orders, nothing more and nothing less. But when they returned home, the reception that they received was appalling. And this is what blackened the eye of America, not that war. People shouted things like baby killer as they spit at them. In fact, it, they should have been honored just as our nation had honored all, this, all those who came before. So I stand here and I say to the Vietnam vets, well done, well done indeed. We've had several wars and conflicts since that time in places all over the world. And like in years past, our servicemen and women have gone far above the call of duty. Make no mistake, we as Americans have always been and will always be the champions of the weak and the downtrodden people all over this planet. We do not run, we do not waver, we may stumble, but we never fall. Because we live in the land of the free, and we are the home of the brave. Thank you to the men and women who are buried here, and again I say, well done, well done indeed. Today we lay these flowers here to honor you, and also to remind us of who made it possible to live as we do.
wife when she was 15 while working in her parents' grocery store. They married three years later, September 1st, 1956, after his entry into the Air Force. He served in the Air Force with his wife, Shirley, and eventually their two, two children, Dan and Cindy, by his side. He served in the Air Force for four years, working on KC-97 as part of the Strategic Air Command, and later he moved into communications and served in various places, including Alaska, Okinawa, and Guam. He was honorably discharged in 1964. George, like so many of his generation, did his duty quietly and without fanfare, but his story and service to his fellow man was only beginning. He went on to become a reserve deputy, a volunteer fire chief, the leader of a search and rescue unit, a lifelong member of the NRA, and a gun safety instructor. It was, it was during the time as fire chief in 1968 that he was responding to a crash outside of Baker, California. He came upon a horrific sight. A man driving a car had intentionally driven headfirst into an oncoming Greyhound bus. He and his crew pulled several people from the burning wreckage. They actually had to commandeer passers-by to aid with the transporting of the victims to the nearest hospital some 62 miles away. 20 people lost their lives that day, but 12 were saved by George and his crew. And in keeping with the type of guy he was, after they put out the fire, he just went home to his family as he always did. They were eventually awarded the Theodore N. Vale Award for devotion and loyalty to duty. This was all done, all as a volunteer, all while working for Pacific Telephone. He even went on to work as part of the communications ground crew for the first space shuttle flight flights. He retired from AT&T in 1990, had open heart surgery in 1995, and was severely diabetic. He spent almost all of his remaining years fixing cars and doing other things for friends and family as well as complete strangers. He died suddenly on a Sunday morning on July 17, 2011 while getting ready for church. He is survived by his beloved wife of nearly 55 years, Shirley, his two children, five grandchildren, and seven great-grandchildren. Well done, George. Well done, indeed. Another poem. Now. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am in a thousand winds of rain. I am fields of ripening grain. Birds of circling flight, I am the star shine of the night. I am in the flowers that bloom, I am in a quiet room. I am the birds that sing, I am in each lovely thing. Do not stand at my grave and cry, I am not there, I do not die. Okay, this is in closing. I wanted to tell you my mom couldn't be here today because my aunt had to have surgery and she's in post-patient right now taking care of her.